announced ProRes Video would be a feature on the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. And with the release of iOS 15.1 Beta 3, it's now available. So I thought I'd take a look and see what it's all about. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you already know what ProRes Video is. But for those that don't, basically, it's a video format created by Apple that is used in professional workflows. ProRes video files are a lot less compressed than a standard H.265 video file that you'll be used to seeing from your iPhone. In theory, this allows for more detail in your footage, which is especially important if you plan on doing heavy color grading, green screen work, and matching footage shot from your iPhone to other professional cameras. So what's the downsides? Well, the files are massive. I've got a 256 gig iPhone 13 Pro Max here, and I have 187 gig free space. The camera app is telling me I can record the following. So as you can see, it's incredibly storage intensive. It's probably not really meant for documenting your everyday life. It's more so meant for use with a specific need in mind. To shoot in ProRes, you need to be using iOS 15.1 Beta 3 or alternatively, the Filmic Pro app has enabled the feature a couple of days ago prior to Apple adding it to the beta. Open up your phone settings, then scroll down to camera, select formats, and then enable ProRes. You can see in the description it says 1 minute of 10 bit HDR ProRes is approximately 1.7 gig for HD and 6 gig for 4K. Then in the camera app you now have this little toggle available to activate it. You can see the max recording time available and sometimes the option to free resources appears to give you a bit more recording time. If you try to change your recording settings and change to an incompatible setting, you get a notice that ProRes is not supported. So now go ahead and shoot your footage and watch your precious storage get chewed up in no time. You have the choice of all three rear cameras plus the front facing camera. As you can see, the footage still isn't great once the light fades, but that's just the limitation of the small camera sensor. The new upgraded wide camera is by far the best once the light level starts to drop. Let me know in the comments if you want me to upload all the ProRes clips you've seen in this video and while you're there maybe hit subscribe because it really helps the channel out. If you feel as though the native camera app is a bit lacking in features, Filmic Pro allows you to manually set your shutter, ISO, white balance and focus for greater control. You also have the option for different ProRes compression levels which depending on your project might be more suitable and let you have longer record times too. ProRes files can be edited on your iPhone just like any other video file, but I think most people will be transferring them to their computer for editing. One issue with the size of ProRes files is transferring them off your iPhone. You have the option of iCloud, AirDrop or using the Lightning to USB cable. Today I transferred 40 ProRes files using AirDrop and in total it was 37 gig and took right on 15 minutes. So is ProRes on the iPhone worth it? To some people, probably, but it's not going to turn a bad storyline into something worth watching. As it is quite storage intensive, it's not meant to be used for everyday videos of your cat to share on Facebook. You should probably only use ProRes with the intention to edit the footage. And even then, if you really want to shoot in ProRes, I'm not sure the iPhone should be your first choice given the sensor size, lens flare, and poor low light ability on the ultra wide and telephoto cameras. At the end of the day, if the final destination is YouTube, all that extra work may not really be worth it anyway. I guess it's nice to have as an option though, and if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. And it does give this Pro phone another Pro level feature. If ProRes video is something high on your priority list for your iPhone, definitely check out the one terabyte storage option. Just be aware of the downsides with the offloading process at this stage. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it around, and thanks for watching.